Assalamu alaikum this is Dr. Hasna and today we will be studying the model of the heart its important external and internal features. So here you have the heart let's imagine it is kept in the normal anatomical position this being the anterior and this being the posterior side this being the right and this being the left side. The apex is going to be directed towards the left apart from that if a medium plane is passed from the heart the right side will contain only one third of the heart and the left will contain two thirds of it. First, let's talk about the borders and surfaces of the heart. When the heart is kept in the normal anatomical position, the apex is directed towards the left and just opposite to the apex lies the base. So you can say this is the base of the heart containing mostly the left atrium. As we all know that this is the right side. The right border extends from the superior vena cava all the way till the inferior vena cava. And on the right border also, there is the sulcus terminalis containing this SA node in its upper part. Then we have the inferior border of the heart. This runs from the inferior vena cava all the way till the apex of the heart. And then we have the left border of the heart, which is running from the left atrium till the apex. And the upper border of the heart is mostly visible on the posterior side, because in the anterior side, the root of the great vessels are going to be covering it. So posteriorly, this is the upper border of the heart. The surfaces of the heart include the sternocostal surface that is going to be covered by the ribs and the sternum. The inferior surface, which is basically what the heart will be resting on when you are holding it in the normal anatomical position. And finally, when this surface is covered and the inferior surface is covered, there is a surface that is left. As you can see, this is known as the left lateral surface. The base of the heart is known as the posterior surface of the heart. Now let's go through the external features of the heart. This is the right side of the heart, this is the left side of the heart, which is the first thing to determine. Let's talk about the right side first. This is the right atrium, an ear-like projection from the right atrium known as the right auricle. This is the right ventricle, entire thing. And on the left side, this is the left atrium extending all the way back. This is the left auricle. This is the entire left ventricle. Now let's talk about the grooves. The groove that lies between atrias and the ventricles is called the atrioventricular groove or the coronary sulcus as it lodges the coronary vessels. Then we have a groove that lies between the two ventricles. This is known as the interventricular groove and this groove is divided into anterior two-thirds and the posterior one-third. So this is the anterior two-third interventricular groove or the interventricular septum and this is a posterior interventricular septum or groove. And then let's talk about the great vessels. These are the great vessels of the heart that originate from the heart. Let's talk about this one first. This is the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk leads from the right ventricle and it consists of the two pulmonary arteries. One goes towards the left side while the other goes to the right side. The left pulmonary artery is attached to the arch of aorta at its inferior aspect as you can see this white part this part is called the ligamentum arteriosum this is basically the remnant of the ductus arteriosus in, in the embryo moreover this is your superior vena cava and this is your inferior vena cava the biggest hint is that it is going to be entering the right atrium let's go towards the back the biggest hint the left atrium will be containing entry of the four pulmonary veins this is obviously the ascending aorta, the arch of aorta, and finally this descending aorta. The arch of aorta is going to be giving one, two, three branches. This is the right side branch called the right brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid, and the left subclavian artery. If you are asked what this structure is, well, the superior vena cava is formed by the union of the two brachiocephalic veins. So the right brachiocephalic vein continues as it is. This is the left brachiocephalic vein forming the superior vena cava with the right brachiocephalic. Posteriorly, you can see entering the superior vena cava is the azygous vein. Let's talk about the vessels that are supplying the heart and lying on top of it. Basically, the atrioventricular groove, as I mentioned earlier, is also known as the coronary sulcus. Hence, this is the right coronary artery. This is the left coronary artery. Let's talk about the right first. The right coronary artery, which gives its right marginal branch. And then it comes to the crux of the heart. Crux of the heart is, is the meeting point of the atrioventricular grooves and posterior interventricular groove. At this point, we all know what the, it gives an AV nodal branch and itself it becomes 
if the heart is right cardiac dominant, it becomes the posterior interventricular branch. So this is the posterior interventricular artery of the right coronary artery in the case of this heart. Then we have the left coronary artery. This is the left anterior descending artery, also known as the anterior interventricular artery. This is the left circumflex artery, giving the left marginal branch. And itself, it continues either if in the left cardiac dominant hearts, the posterior interventricular artery, otherwise it just ends over here. Let's talk about the veins. So the major venous channel lies at the back of your heart, known as the coronary sinus. So this is your coronary sinus. It receives tributaries, the most important of which is a great cardiac vein, which extends its first part in the anterior interventricular groove and the second part in the rest of the left border of the heart and entering the coronary sinus. Apart from this, we have the middle cardiac vein also draining in the coronary sinus. And finally, at the right border of the heart, the small cardiac vein draining also in the coronary sinus. Other veins of the heart include the left diagonal vein, which will be lying on the left atrium. The left diagonal vein is going to be combining with your great cardiac vein to form the coronary sinus. Apart from this, we have independent veins that do not drain into the coronary sinus, rather just enter directly into the right atrium. These are the anterior cardiac veins. Other veins include the vena cordis minimi, which are not visible as they are minute. This is the right atrium of the heart. This is the anterior rough part containing the musculi pectinati. This is the posterior smooth part of the sinus venarum of your uh, right atrium. As you can see, the important features of this is the openings for the superior inferior vena cava, the coronary sinus lying between the entry of inferior vena cava and the interatrial septum or the AV orifice. This you can see is the coronary sinus. This hole is known as the fossa ovalis and surrounding it the margin known as the limbus ovalis or the annulus ovalis. Apart from this, the white structure that is surrounding the coronary sinus is known as the Thebesian valve. This is the atrioventricular orifice. Here lies your tricuspid valve on the right side. Apart from this, this is the rough inflowing part of the right ventricle. This is the smooth outflowing part of the infundibulum of the right ventricle. This is the semilunar pulmonary valve. This is the papillary muscle of the right ventricle. This is one papillary muscle. All of this is the trabeculae carni. The structure lying between the two parts of the right ventricle is known as the supraventricular crest. Apart from this, we have the interventricular septum. Now let's talk about the left atrium. The left atrium is basically going to contain openings of your pulmonary veins, four pulmonary veins. And finally, your mitral valve or your bicuspid valve at the AV orifice of the left side and this is the left ventricle the wall being three times thicker than the right ventricle the left ventricle contains your two papillary muscles and a rough inflowing part and a smooth outflowing part known as the aortic vestibule and finally the aortic valve semilunar valve so as you can see the valve structures differ two semilunar valves have three cusps However, the AV valve at the left side, known as the mitral valve, has only two cusps. And the tricuspid also has three cusps. And so that was all that you need to know about the heart model, the detailed structures for OSPI examination point of view. I really hope that helps. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.